This is a Ford Mustang Mach-E. It has the extended battery and all-wheel drive. In this video, we are charging it from 0% to 100%, and we're gonna be doing a whole charging curve log. Now, there's a lot that goes into the Mustang in terms of charging curves because it's unlike any other car I've ever tested. So let me explain. <laughs> This Mustang Mach-E has a 99 kilowatt hour battery pack installed capacity and only 88 is usable. So there's an 11 kilowatt hour buffer that's primarily, I imagine, on the bottom side of the battery pack, but I'm sure there's still some up top. So let's talk about what we're doing here. What we've done is we are going to the Electrify America station in Lakewood, Colorado, just outside of Denver. I've driven the car from about a 98% state of charge all the way down to zero. We went up the I-70 pass, wide open throttle, heated everything up, regen on the way down, tried to get it as toasty as possible. Uh, but again, not too hot to where it was thermal throttling. And we know that because the AC chiller was not running. We had it running and then we cooled it back off down. Um, and this is the second Mustang Mach-E that I've tested. I actually had one at the launch program in Michigan. I stole one for a whole day. Everyone else went on their three hour program thing. And my goal was to test some of the charging. And uh, when I tested the Mustang Mach-E charging curve, I was just blown away by how weird it was. So I said, okay, you know, I talked to Ford engineers about this. And at first they were like, yeah, that doesn't sound right. And then I spoke to the head of engineering, Darren Palmer, and he said, oh yeah, here's our charging strategy. I was like, huh, that's pretty interesting. Now they have not said anything to me about changing the charging curve in future updates, but I will say it sounds to me just through other channels, it sounds like this might be changing. So take everything you're, you're seeing here with a grain of salt. This is the initial software release for Mustang Mach-E. To me, it's a crazy charging curve. Let me explain why. So come on over this way. On this side of the car, there's a CCS charging connector. This one uses, of course, J1772 and the two DC pins on the bottom, making CCS type one. Um, in the US, this is our new standard. You have the Tesla plug and this Chatamo is basically gone now that uh, Nissan Aria will be using the CCS plug. And the way that this car utilizes a CCS connector is in two ways. Of course, the top part, J1772, this has a 48 amp, 12 kilowatt onboard charger. Really awesome, no problem. Been charging it up at home at 12 kilowatts. And then the CCS connection, Ford claims a 150 kilowatt peak output from the charger into the car. And the problem here is that the Mustang actually on paper exceeds that claim. When you plug this car in at low state of charge at anything, you know, I've seen up to 25% plugging in, I've seen as high as 167 kilowatt peak delivered to the car. Now I'm not actually sure what the car is taking because there's no way to see in the car how much power you're getting. There's no kilowatt meter. It just shows you a time to completion. So I'm relying on charging power deliver, uh, delivered on the Electrify America screen to show how many kilowatts it's putting into the car. It's close enough, but plus or minus two or three kilowatts for losses is to be expected. Um, the way that Ford has designed its charging curve is to do it on a time-based system. So if you plug in at really low state of charge, you may only get 160 seconds at peak current, and then it will drop down. And if you plug in at 20% of state, 20% uh, state of charge, you may get 300 seconds at 160 kilowatts, and then it ramps down uh, progressively. So in this test, we did a zero to 100% charging curve, basically showing a zero to full. Uh, you'll see all the stats and results. We'll talk it through when we share the video. In the, a future video, I'm going to test a few different things. We're gonna test the 10 to 80%, the 20 to 80%, and the 50 to 80% time. Because my suspicion is we will see much faster charging by plugging in deeper into the pack when pack voltage is higher and you need less current to reach 160, 165 kilowatts of charging power. So I'm not sure if this is a cabling limitation, if it's a battery pack limitation, or if it's a software limitation. My gut tells me it's a software limitation. And uh, the other test I wanna be doing is of course, plugging it in to get max speeds, unplugging, replugging back in and getting max speeds again, which does work. I've already tested this just to confirm my theory. If you plug in, you'll get your 300 seconds, 300 seconds at 160 kilowatts, it drops to 110. If you unplug and then replug back in, you get another 
300 seconds at 160 kilowatts. Now, Ford says this is a thermal strategy. That's what they've told me. Uh, I don't think it's the right way to do it. I think you rely on sensor data and dynamically ramp down your curve when things get hot. So that's how everyone else does it. Maybe this is the right way. I'm sure there are smarter people than me in the comments to tell me why my feelings are wrong. I'm so excited to hear those. I want to learn as well. So let's go zero to 100%. In a future video, we're gonna be testing the 10 to 80, again, going that way. Then we'll doing the plug and unplug. And the one thing to keep in mind here that is consistent with all of my charging tests and with all of the tests that others have done is there's a huge drop off at 80%. From 80%, as soon as you hit over from 79 to 80, it drops to 12 kilowatts and sits there to 95%, where then it ramps down to finish. In this video, we, set, we spent two and a half hours, a little bit over, charging from zero to 100%, plugged into the Electrify America, worked the first time, no charging bugs, not an issue on EA at all. This was actually a perfect charging session from zero to 100, ambient temperatures were about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. We did not run climate control in the car just because I wanted to see how many kilowatt hours would be delivered without a huge draw on the vehicle. And you'll see all of those stats. Of course, there's charging losses, so that's gonna go uh, higher than the 88 kilowatt hours usable. And the car is fresh. When we did the charging session, it only had 700 miles on it, so there's very little degradation. It was just built a few weeks ago. So without, with all that big intro, let's jump into the charging curve. We have pulled into the charger with 1% battery remaining. Right now I have the car running the heater at full blast, warming things up because we're not gonna run the heater during the charging test. Of course, just so that all of the energy that's being delivered from the charger, at least most of it ends up into the car and we don't get misrepresentative results. A uh, heater can pull up to six kilowatts, so it could artificially show six kilowatts higher than it's actually doing. Anyway, Mustang Mach-E drove it from around 100%, maybe 98%. Took it up I-70, shredded it up the hill, regen on the way down. The battery is toasty, toasty warm. It's about 44 degrees Fahrenheit outside right now and dropping quick. We have a 350 kilowatt charger right here. Both say available. We have another 350 kilowatt station right here on this side. Both say available. The reason I chose this spot here was one, uh, we'll probably take a nap while it's charging. So I nosed it in. And then two, we have, again, if one fails, we can unplug and quickly plug back in with another 350 kilowatt. We have now reached 0% state of charge. It's 1041 PM. We're gonna see how long it takes charge up to 100%. So here we go. Let's plug in to the CCS connection. The reason I use the 350 kilowatt charger is because this car can actually accept a little bit more than 150. So the nice thing is you can leave the car on with the headlights all the way off. Looks like the charging is starting, initiating charging, handshake, contactors are clicking, cable cooling is going. We are on, I believe the ABB units here. Yes, we are. And looks like all is good let's let this thing rip time to get into the charging curve the first thing i want to mention is we are just evaluating the mustangs charging this doesn't evaluate the rest of the vehicle which is actually really good and so if you're interested in mustang maki -E road trips by the time the day this video goes live i will be on a 25 300 or 3000 mile road trip 2500 mile road trip in this mustang maki -E going to california all around and back uh, and I actually think it's a great road tripper. I think it's got plenty of range and I think it drives unbelievably well. So this is just about the charging. Take this all, you know, into valuation. I think the Mustang is really not exceptional in any category, not really terrible in any category, but hits everything just fine, if not better. I think it's a great EV. Here we go. Let's start the charging session. Boom. Uh, plugging in first, the Electrify America station worked perfectly. I swiped the app on my phone, started right up, plugged in no charging bugs this time. You can see we shot right up to 158 kilowatts there, and then it backs off when we hit 6%. Again, when pack voltage is low, you need a ton of current therefore it should in theory heat things up quicker so ford gives you less time at max current at low state of charge if we plugged in at 20 percent they would have elongated the time that we could have spent pulling maximum current here we are the screens uh, we're down to 107 kilowatts now which is pretty poor for again this is a 99 kilowatt hour pack with big buffers audi e-tron has a very similar pack and that'll do 150 kilowatts all the way to 80 percent every time without fail uh, and that is a really awesome charging curve. So I think that's sort of the gold standard in this category of EVs, and this is what we're comparing it against. 
The EA screen's a little laggy when I have to switch from the home screen back to this screen here, and uh, it does rotate automatically. Uh, note to EA, I'm sure some of you guys are watching this video as you do most of our stuff, appreciate it. Uh, would love to see a kilowatt rate on the home screen right there so I don't have to keep getting out of the car every exactly, I think, 60 seconds and rotate through and it's super laggy. Down to 80 kilowatts here at 39%, uh, when now we drop to 79, it'll go down to about 76 kilowatts here in just a second. And this is unacceptably low speeds, I would say, um, during this charging curve right here. You'll notice that we go from 76 kilowatts and we'll jump up to 77, 78, 79. What the car is doing is it's requesting a certain current output from the charger. And then as pack voltage increases, so will your total power delivered to the vehicle. 50% state of charge update. It's taken about 27 minutes and it is all the way down to 76 kilowatts, which is totally consistent with my previous charging test that I've done on Mustang Mach-E. Also, the screen keeps going back to this thing, so I stole this little plow marker from over there, which I will absolutely return, so I can push this silver button right there, just like this, and let's see if I can get it, push, and now the screen will return back to the normal screen with the charging information on it. Uh, and I have to do this every one minute, exactly 60 seconds, and it lags, it takes a little while to show up. There we go. Uh, I believe the Mustang Mach-E is a 350 volt pack or 380 volt, anyway, it's a pretty low voltage um, uh, battery pack, so you do need a ton of current to get uh, quite a bit of power in there, which can lead to, to heating things. Remember, it's I squared R, so for the increase in current, you will have the square of uh, basically heat loss of impedance, so, uh, I believe that's how that works. Anyway, up to 60% state of charge here, still sitting at 77, 78 kilowatts. Uh, at this point, multiple people have come over uh, and looked at the car. This again is at 11.20 p.m. and we had Tesla owners walking over. It's right next to a supercharger and everyone was drooling over the Mustang. People were super excited about it. I found that pretty interesting. Uh, again, charging cost, we're at 32 cents per kilowatt hour, 31 cents per kilowatt hour. I think that is totally acceptable and very okay pricing considering the fact of how expensive DC charging is and not only DC charging but 350 kilowatt stations to put in uh, I think this is actually a, a very fair price so I don't agree with everyone who says uh, Electrify America is very expensive you get the Pass Plus membership for four bucks a month uh, you know the breakover of that four dollars I think is 34 kilowatt hours if you take so just pay the four bucks and uh, you're good so here at 80 percent we've dipped down to 12 kilowatts no matter what you do there's a hard limit at 80 percent that will dip down to 12. now i actually stopped this recording here and we pick it up in real time just because i knew it was going to take a long time to finish up between 80 and 100 percent but I did want to have that sort of headline title that it takes, you know, a zero to 100% charge takes two hours and 34 minutes on the Mustang Mach-E, at least in our testing, which has been consistent now multiple times. So let's jump to real time, Kyle, back at the station. We've just hit 81%, but at 80% state of charge, the charge rate tapered down. Let me just make sure I can click the button. There we go. Have to make sure the aim is good with this thing. Um, we've tapered down to 12 kilowatts as expected. So now we'll see how long it takes to fully charge this thing. Alyssa's here with me. Are you committed to spending the next two hours charging this to 100%? Well, I can't go anywhere, so yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be good to have a true number of how long it really takes. Sure, yeah. All right, course. so here we go. It says 1.34 a.m. Uh, tomorrow and it's 11.39. So that doesn't seem too bad, about two hours, no problem. And there we go, fully charged at 100%, 220 miles predicted. And sorry for making such a long video, but here are the final results. The total energy delivered to the vehicle is 92 kilowatt hours. Again, I did not run climate control at all during this process. I think we both had our heated seats on the lowest setting. We're talking less than 50 watts probably. Um, but the reason that it was delivered 92 kilowatt hours but 88 is usable is because there's always going to be losses from running the battery coolers, the heat pumps, or I should say the, the coolant pumps, uh, and, and just general transmission losses for this type of thing, especially with connections. So 92 kilowatt hours went through the CCS connection into the Mach-E's. The charging time was two hours, 32 minutes, and nine seconds. That is from a 0%. Again, the car wasn't 
completely dead. I think it was predicting two miles of range left. We probably could have driven it another, uh, you know, let's say one more kilowatt hour out of it, maybe a little bit less than one kilowatt hour, uh, but, but close enough. And uh, two hours, 32 minutes, zero to 100%. But again, that zero to 80 time was closer to 55 minutes. And if we had plugged in at 20%, that 20 to 80% would be even more de decreased. So future testing, of course, again, is going to be plugging this car in at different states of charge with the same temperature and same charger and also logging that charging curve because I imagine it's only going to get better uh, the deeper into the pack that we get. And again, I'm going on a road trip, literally heading out in the morning from when I'm recording this and I'm going to figure that out all throughout this next uh, 3,000 miles then I'll shoot everything and upload it for you in the future so give me a week or two to get that done uh, the uh, let's see the session fee is zero EA doesn't do session fees anymore and the total charging cost with tax is twenty nine dollars and eighty cents I think that's pretty reasonable. Look, it sounds like a lot, but we got 92 kilowatt hours into this car. If you were to charge a Mini Cooper SE, it would be like $8. So, you know, the cost of a charge isn't the cost of a charge. It's how much energy was delivered to your vehicle is what this is measuring. Now, certain states don't allow Electrify America to bill by kilowatt hour. They have to bill by minute because they can't resell electricity. Uh, so there's some ordinances about this. And the Mustang Mach-E would probably be cheaper on the per minute sites if you were to charge from, let's say, 5% to 80% and then go to the next. Uh, but here, I think charging up, uh, I could do the math, but I'm not going to. Someone will in the comments. Uh, sitting here for two and a half hours, it was actually cheaper to bill by kilowatt hour, I think. So with that said, thanks so much for watching this video. Let me, let you, what am I trying to say? You let me know what you think about the mach -E's charging curve and uh, what Ford can do to improve it. And then I hope there's a future software update rumored to be rolling out soon that we will then do the same testing on once the new software update rolls and see if there's any difference because I think this could be a great story for Ford if we can show here's the baseline, here's how the vehicle was delivered, and then here's how they were able to improve it after uh, learning how charge curves work a little better is what I'm guessing. So fingers crossed and can't wait to be uh, sharing. This is an updating story. This is just the, the first of many tests on the Mustang Mach-E's charging curve. If you like this kind of stuff, let us know because I have Volkswagen ID4, Tesla Model Y, a whole bunch of other cars coming, and I'm happy to provide all those uh, details to you as well here on this channel. We don't just do EVs. We do everything, but I love electric cars. So let's go and have a great one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.